From the year 2012, October 11 has been set aside as the International Day of the Girl Child. So that means that all over the world today, the girl child is being celebrated. What is this celebration really about? And what is the big idea behind this? Welcome to Catholic Faith Forum. I'm May, and I'm here with Nonso and Blessing. And hey guys. we're here to talk about the girl child. So Hi. what is this celebration really about? Okay, so um, the International Day of the Girl Child um, is a day set aside to re-emphasize on the needs of the girl child. Not really about celebrating the girl child because um, there are a lot of things that that we need to talk about. Definitely. A lot of deficits, mm -hmm. you know, being a girl child, the, a lot of things that young girls go through. So it's actually a day that we, you're trying to put a light, this day has been set aside, to talk about the issues, these, issues. these girls child, these children face. Um, so more like it, every year there's a team. Um, so we talk about, we go around the team, you know, talking about what we should do, how we, how we can help the girl child. In this situation. How can, yes, how, how we can help them to, um, the power inside of them, you know, how we can help bring out the best. Unleash out the, the best that's in the every word. girl child. That's the word. Okay, okay. Let's, let's stop here. When we come back from this break, we'll go right into the gist of the day. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is Catholic Grace Forum. I'm May, and I'm here with Nonso. Yes, so... The finest girl ever lived. Don't listen to me, like... Uh, can you take a look at me? No, help me. The girl child. <laughs> We're so celebrating I, ourselves today, please. Yeah. We're all proud to be women, and today is a day we actually get to talk about these things. Mm. And why are we blessing Ashi? She's... Let me, let, me, let me just read it out to you. She's mm. a sexually productive health advocate for young people and a member of UNFPA the youth participatory platform of this. Wow. How is that like? Like, I feel like you're doing so much and I'm doing so little. No. <laughs> I feel like everybody's just um, contributing their quota. Um, my job as a sexual reproductive health advocate is to advocate for the rights of young people, especially girls mm -hmm. and women in underserved community or vulnerable people, women um, specifically and girls. Everybody, I do well. Well, I do well. Well, our only two. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for making well. me feel better about it. So who is this girl child that we all keep talking about? Okay, so the girl child is you, the girl yeah. child is me, uh -huh. the girl child is the beautiful Chinonsura. Oh, oh so my god. Is, you know, um, the female species is the girl child. Okay, so what are the rights being advocated for the girl child? Um, why, is, why, is this, why is there so much talk about it? What are those rights that we're fighting for? Okay, so I grew up having friends um, whose parents would rather send their son to school rather than send them to school because they felt it was a waste, a waste of, of money, funds. Mm -hmm. And you know the notion that a girl would always end up in the kitchen. Let's not go there yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so um, there are a lot of things that a girl child has been deprived of yes. because we're born female. Mm -hmm. And we are unapologetically unapologet female, really. We can't... I think I'm proud I'm a female, you know. Mm -hmm. So the rights we are fighting for, the rights to education. Education is... Um, a right like it's a it's a compulsory right for every individual regardless of whether i am female regardless of whether you're male mm -hmm. everyone has a right to education we're also fighting for the right of good health you know many a time um young girls die because the, if you need to save between a guy and a girl who would you want to go for you know parents want to weigh their option and also the, the reason why we are fighting for this also is that when you empower a, a, um, a female with education quality education there is a chance that um, there's, there's not going to be mortality rates mm -hmm. because she's advanced. She yeah. has yeah. knowledge. She's educated. She knows what she, she should has know. knowledge. There's economic empowerment because she has the ability to multiply. So you're yeah, giving she's her impacting her children as well to, to work. And yeah. also the world at large too. Mm -hmm. And also is that um, there's reduced number of population. At the moment, I can't even see how many we are because the last um, census that was done, I'm sure they are behind. In Nigeria? Uh, oh, yeah. They are behind schedule. <laughs> they are behind schedule. <laughs> so, really, empowering the girl child mm -hmm. is ensuring that um, women have the right. They know, they know what it is they are doing. You know? They have a right to make a decision. Mm -hmm. you know? They have a right to say, this is the number of children we want. You know? They have a right to quality education. They have a right to good health, primary health care services. They have a right also, like empowering them also is to stop harmful traditional practices. Yes. Because if I am educated, I would not allow you to mutilate me. Mm -hmm. You know? And oh, if well, but they, some of them don't have the choice. What, what, what about those that were, that were mutilated when they were very young? Were, those, they don't even have the 
Will I say the power? Yes, I don't have the power to say no. I would say, I would say that it was because they did not have insight and there was no education to that effect. Mm -hmm. Because one okay. of the things that has gone into um, in the past few years now is advocacy and um, education, sexuality education, community education, mm. around all of these challenges that women face. And also, it's important that we put the place of men in fighting for um, to ending harmful traditional practices. Because yes. you can't take away the place of a father, you can't take away the place of a brother. If the man is educated, if the boy child is also educated about these issues women face, it will be help. very easy for them to tell um, the woman or the man who is going to mutilate their child, you that can't do that. Wrong. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. for child marriage, for example, imagine an educated father knows the benefit of educating his female daughter. He wouldn't want to give his child out for marriage you know, exposing the girl to health issues, mm -hmm. exposing the girl to low, low self-esteem, mm. expos exposing the girl to um, death that could come as a result of pregnancy because the pelvic is not strong enough to be able to... At that age, yes, definitely. Strong. Okay, so my concern, I like what you said about from the, on, from the start of this, that is like reminding them yeah. of the need for a girl child. What my, my major concern is when it comes to training, okay. training children, I think the way parents train their um, female children is quite different from the way they train their male children. Mm. When it comes to the females, like they put all the iron in their hand <laughs> to train this girl, and then and they forget for the to male, train for the male, male is it's just way. free because I remember um, a popular person was giving a talk about um, female and male. Like you train your boys, you don't so even train you your train. boys to see the girls as precious human mm. beings you just train your boys oh they are men and then you train your women to be fit for the kitchen to sweep well mm. to do things well why can't we train, train our boys our children to be the same way regardless of children sex, yes actually. train your children I, I i heard a woman once saying she told her son oh you go and wash plate you go and cook and another woman was like why are you making them what happens she said they are all my children exactly. yeah. he will cook he will sweep they should he will learn do these everything things. and parents i don't think mm. parents some parents don't understand that they should have the same balance, kind of like balance. balance. Yeah. There should be a balance, yeah. not just, oh, the, the male have. Even as we're growing up now, you see you, your, your elder brothers can leave home anytime they like. Mm, but the female, female child. just tell your dad that, oh, I want to move out. Oh, they'll call <laughs> family <laughs> meetings. <laughs> <laughs> on your head. And then I want to know why this is like this. You, you mentioned education. So I know education is key, but is it enough? Okay, so um, I, I feel education is the most important thing because in education is advocacy. Okay. okay. Education can be formal and it can be informal. Mm -hmm. So bringing education to grassroots level is like a solution to it. Mm. Um, engaging policymakers, engaging stakeholders like parents, community leaders, traditional leaders, mm. um, religious leaders. Important. Yeah, you know, very important. They are very, very important. Everywhere the child spends time, it's important that you also educate the people they spend time with, you know. That way, because um, there are ways by which external forces um, speak to your children or speak to children mm -hmm. or a girl child and actually destroys their self-esteem. So it's yes. important that we educate everyone together, advocacy, awareness, you know, outreaches, engaging everyone together. Let's not forget that in, um, International Women's Day for 2020, um, the team is each for equal. Like we're trying to blend yeah. the balance. Mm -hmm. Like everyone, each for equal. Like everyone has a right to do like the same Equality. thing. If I'm going to give a child, a male child education, you should give I should a, also give a female well. child. And this life has gone, and the world has gone beyond um, a, a, a girl, a guy child coding and a female child can't code because we are, we are, we they're equal opportunities. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't be a medical doctor because I'm female, I'm female yeah. and um, I can't be an, an engineer. engineer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I can't be an engineer because I'm, I'm female, you know. Um, I, I, I can't be a pilot because I'm female. No, 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 no. no. Things now have it's, changed. Yes, things have changed. Like, so education I, is what is... I know that things important. have changed, but how, how much closer do you think we are to achieving that goal of equal, equality between male and female? So, um, you know about the Sustainable Development Goals for 20, 2030? I would say that we are doing our best because of the fact that there's partnership with the United Nations, there's partnership with mm -hmm. the government, there's partnership with pa parents. But mm -hmm. the truth is that we are not doing, we are, we are doing a lot, but we are still not doing a lot because there are still some people who have not heard. And you know, advocacy um, is very, very important, you know. Um, you can't blame somebody for doing something that it, because the person might not even know that I am doing something wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's where the place of us going to the grassroots. I'll let, let me quickly share, let me divert a little. So sometimes in the year, I had to go to um, teaching hospital 
So, um, and then I was going to run a, a normal routine HIV testing, just so you know, you, you're safe, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I got to um, the person who was going to test. A girl came in before me and they asked her, have you done your HIV test before? And she said, no, what is HIV? Wow. This is a wow. girl that stays in the metropolitan area in Lagos. Wow. In the year 2020. In the year 2020. <laughs> and this person I'm talking about is, if not a teenager, would be between 18 to 20. So maybe just leave wow. me into it. Wow. And I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> like were you sure she was not joking? She was not. <laughs> I would have <laughs> thought she was joking. Uh, after I did my test, uh, I, I went back and then she looked at me and she said, uh, have you done your test? I said, yes. And then she was like, how was the result? First of all, HIV, HIV test result, many people don't reveal it. They are you know, private. You know, they are private. Just, but for me, regardless, I'm like, oh, it's negative. Like, uh, so what is HIV? Well, I looked at her like that and I'm like, huh? So this the is truth real. is that if this happened in a teaching hospital in and she Lagos. lives in a, an area where she's prone to vices mm -hmm. and she's not yeah. aware of HIV, let's talk about the female child and, and how in a lot of people... Imagine in a rural in, area. In a rural area, which is why I said including them grassroots level, speak in the language you understand. So if you want to do advocacy in AUSA, please do so. If you need to do our, whatever language anyone mm -hmm. would understand is what you use. So education is actually very key. And using the language people will understand, you know, is key. If there's anyone like that. <laughs> I guess. Okay, so, you know, Nonso mentioned that um, those gender roles or things that have been placed on a woman belongs in the kitchen and a man yeah. belongs in the, in fact, just doing nothing most of the time. <laughs> Sorry. No offense. <laughs> no offense. No offense. No offense. No offense. But do you think this thing can be changed? Can it be changed? Because this has happened, I think it's part of our culture. Yeah. It just treats the men, they will inherit everything. They are the ones that are the, they make all the decisions. The women are just there to be traded as wives and daughters to do what they need to do. But the men, are, they actually hold all the power. Do you think this can change? So I'd like to say that um, cultures were set by men. Um, when we were born into this world, we didn't meet anything. Now. Even the Bible said that the earth was without form and void. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That was the first man that came. Adam was one that named the animals. Now, you, yeah, know? you see, so the truth is that it was whatever he named it to be. That was what it was. That's what it was. So it means that this culture, so somebody sets the culture. So mm -hmm. Cultures can be reset. Yes, mm -hmm. it can be reset. So the truth is that whoever sets the culture actually sets it in a way that fits me and you, fits them at that point in time. You know. Let's divert a little. One of the issues that young girls face is female genital mutilation. Yes. Yeah. And it's not female circumcision because there are two different things. Female genital mutilation because you can't say, you can say male circumcision but you can't say female circumcision because it's compulsory you circumcise a male child but you shouldn't be circum and There's nothing like that for a female child. Why should you do that? You know? So one of the reasons why that happened, came into existence was because they said um, there was promiscuity, you know, mm -hmm. females were sex was cheap for them. They were thinking of sex at every point in time. So they thought in their mind. That once they do that, it will curb their, their small mind. Their small mind. <laughs> to cut the, the clitoris just so that it could reduce sexual urge. Oh, but yeah. has that solved any problem? No. Rather, United Nations actually has a standard. The standard is that for every practice you do that has one side effect, just one, you know, it's not a practice and should be abolished. Imagine female circumcision. It has more than one. It has more than ten. And it varies among the, the girl child, you know. So it's not even a practice that should be had. And the person who started the practice did it because of a particular selfish reason he was trying to curb. And look at where it has gotten us into right now, you know. There are a lot of a lot of women now who can't even have children because they were circumcised. Yeah. You know, there are lots of women who have so been sad. going through. Some people have died because of bleeding. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. some people are, are, are on antiretroviral drugs because they use the blade. That was, uh, infected. that was infected, infected, of course, because they share bleed to do that. So there are a lot of practices that were done by man. So if a man could do something, it means that we could change the narrative. So in changing narrative is to include policymakers, stakeholders, the government. Yeah. It's very important that they make policies that can rewrite whatever has been written before now. So one of the policies that was made in Nigeria for female circumcision is that it's a criminal offense to engage in um, female, um, female genital mutilation. Nice. criminal offense and before that was done um there was a mechanism put in place where they tell you to drop your blade and get an incentive for it so for some people that drop their blades they got um, um error what they call it's a grinder some got sewing machines some got pick up a trade or just something. pick up a trade because that was like a way of life for people mm -hmm. so drop your blade and get something so that has been put in place so after now 
if they catch you doing it, you're on your own, on your own. Yeah. Yeah. But, some yeah. people, but some people are still doing it. It means nobody is reporting That's the, the cases point. that are happening. That's the point. Which is why I said there is need for education and advocacy. advocacy. Yeah. Like, advocacy should go beyond schools. Advocacy should go beyond just this talk show. Mm -hmm. you know? Advocacy should go to the churches. Advocacy should go to all religious places, irrespective of whichever it is. You know, advocacy should go to universities. Advocacy should go to the malls. Every and because place, every everywhere. place right anyone right can in front see. Of your house. You know, advocacy should go everywhere. You know, you want to use billboards, do your advocacy. Because the truth is that once I am informed, you, must, you, you, sh you can be rest assured that I would inform hundreds of people, directly and indirectly. It could just be a conversation. Yes. And I'm already dropping the message. And people actually pick different messages differently. True. You know? So in order for us to be able to change the narratives, it's involving stakeholders, generally, parents, you know, involving government, like I mentioned. And also, speaking to ourselves, you know, I was, I was, I was telling, talking to a friend recently. I said, I discovered that peer pressure doesn't exist only among children. It exists among adults. It does. A I saw a, a friend of mine um, t spoke about her aunt that wanted to, suck, um, that wanted to mutilate her, her daughter. And sorry? to say that the, 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 the aunt is educated, very educated. So, so the problem was that she had friends that who had already mutilated their children. Oh my gosh, and she didn't to want to be left, and, left No, out. and they were using it against her in, the 20, in this 21st century. <laughs> Yes, girl children should be celebrated. Child is child, male, female. And celebrating a girl child gives her the morale to stand among the equal. Yes. How? Well, by educating them, motivating them positively, celebrating them basically. Yes, I think the girl child should be celebrated through empowerment through education, sending them to schools, empowering them with the right skills, teaching them how to have a voice in society and not be subdued by the voice of men, the authority of men. They should have their own voice, they should speak their truth. So yeah, I think they celebrated at every point in time. Well, the thing is that, why, okay, I'm not supporting it. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, they used against her maybe because she supported it in the past. Well, all things are passed away and new things have become new. I could have supported something in my ignorance and now that I know it, okay. I you don't have want to do, support them. You have more, to do better. You know? But for her, she was keen on circumcising a five year old daughter. Thank are God. You because others had done it and yes. she was feeling she was arrested. Hey, hey she was, there was fire in her bones. <laughs> 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 and uh, it, it's as good as the fact that. Well, one of the things we encourage other governments, other states to do is ensure that there's policy, strong policies in their states. So for a state like Lagos State, um, there, there are lots of policies that would catch you red-handed. So what they did was that they stalked her very early in the morning, you know, before the activity could even take place. Mm. And they gave her a stern wow. warning that if anybody, so it's not you, now you're not the guardian, beyond the mother, you're not the guardian. If anybody tries to mutilate the girl, you'll be arrested. Okay. You know? So policies, you know, putting we can't remove the place of the government in solving mm -hmm. lots of issues. We can't because once it's law, of... nobody wants to. Yes, defend. yes. Once you know that it's a criminal offense, yeah. And there are fast actions. I can I can assure you there are fast actions to it. Like, so once like fast, for example, I mentioned the story of the girl who's aunt wanted mm -hmm. to. They mm. picked up. They went to the place immediately. It was just a phone call. She wasn't even there. It was a phone call. She sent the address and they located her. So are there her. Phone, like phone lines that people can call in, in this kind of situation? So first is our advice that people should check up the Ministry of Women Affairs and um, Poverty Elevation, Lagos State. Because of different states, it varies. Okay. Except that there are different organizations that and do that, which I am not, I don't really know a lot about it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But if you check up, if you're in Lagos State, for example, you check up on, online, you will get lots of different toll numbers you can call to be able to profit um, it helps the situation. Okay, that's, that's, so we're still talking about this um, cultural thing and the way girls have been put in certain, certain roles. Do you think that has affected us as individuals into how we grew up, how we yes. what we've become? Yes, it has, it has. So um, because of certain values our parents instilled into us, we find ourselves doing certain things that we shouldn't even be doing. You mm -hmm. know? 
um, because of our environment also, yeah. we find ourselves also doing things we should not do. So for example, you find a girl who is, um, when you see her speak, it's like she's always possessive, like shouting, like, <laughs> you know, once emotion, always emotion for some people, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So really, mm. so that has actually affected the narrative. But then that comes, there's, there's a place of individuality, ensuring that you want to change the narrative yourself. Yeah. So I grew up in a slum, somewhere in Lagos, but um, you wouldn't really even know I grew up in that environment, you know, because I decided to make the difference. Like I told myself that- You had to I, be different. I can't blame my parents for giving back to me here, mm -hmm. you know? but I would blame myself if I remain in the that same particular way. situation. And beyond being in the same way, I would also blame myself if I don't make impact because I am exposed and I have the knowledge and I need to ensure that every other person have the knowledge. You yeah. understand? So there's a place of uh, individuality, ensuring that we encourage one another, you know. You, are, you, are, you were born here, but you can't stay here. You mm -hmm. know? You have, there's a whole lot. See, the universe is too large for everyone. In fact, if everyone decided to blue, it will still not be enough to contain <laughs> all of us, you know. But this won't happen except we inform ourselves. You mm -hmm. know, we engage ourselves. Have to make an effort yeah. you know, yeah. ourselves. As, as, as a girl child, we need to keep encouraging other girl child, you know. One of the issues that we shy away from talking about is menstruation. Yes. Menstrual hygiene. And it's a serious issue. Why should I be shy? Because Talk I about something that is natural. Why should I even be shy you to buy no sanitary You have no control over pad? it. Why should I be shy to buy sanitary pad? You know, why should I get to a pharmacy to buy sanitary pad and I and see you a guy and I'm like... I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, why? It's natural. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't choose to be a female. I didn't choose... You know, sometimes I tell myself, if I had my way, this blood thing, uh, <laughs> that's not good there. But, but you know, it's happening already. So why should I be shy to go to the pharmacy to exactly. buy you know? it's, so it's a natural thing. So it's a place thing. of you understanding that I didn't put myself in this position. Mm -hmm. I, I can't change that fact. You know, but I can help myself become better and enjoy the fact that I'm female. I am female, like I said, and I'm unapologetic about being female. Mm. Okay. Yeah, my, you have anything? To say? Okay. Mm. So I wanted to just mention that, okay, yes, we support female, but there are still some messages that are being passed that are wrong. I mean, if you go on social media today, there's so many people just saying they want, like, it, it, for them, it feels like the world should just be full of females. But then we forget the creation. Mm. We created male, male and, and female. female. So yeah. women or the girl child cannot even exist, exist without, without, without the male. Yes, yes. And then vice versa. Vice so it's the same thing. Yeah. But people just make it look like, oh, men are bad. Men, we're mm, not, no, men are not no, bad. No, 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 men are bad. Men are this. When they're trying to emphasize that women should be paid attention to. And yeah. that is wrong in itself. Mm -hmm. And that's the equality thing we're all striving for. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of today's show. Unfortunately, oh. we don't have much time. <laughs> so, um, children are gifts from God. So whether you have a male child or a female child, love them. Not for their gender roles or what they can offer you. Because whether you have a girl or a boy, they're all gifts from God. And you should love these gifts with all you have. And they need to live a good life and become better people. So... Now we'll queue for today's episode of Know Your Faith series. Stay with us. At most parishes, before the reception of the Holy Communion, an announcement is given that only practicing Catholics who are in the state of grace can come forward for the reception of the Holy Eucharist. Now, a whole lot of people give side comments like, um, why the, are you excluding people? Um, what's the big deal? I came to church now, we're all Christians, and so many side comments like that. But the truth is, there are actually reasons why non-Catholics should not receive communion. Welcome to KYF, I am Collins, and today we'll be discussing why non-Catholics are barred from receiving Holy Communion. So, the first is that the Holy Communion is a statement of the faith. You have to believe that during consecration, the bread and wine is turned fully into the body, soul, and divinity of Christ himself. Meaning that you have to believe that Christ is actually present. If not, there is no point going out to say you want to receive communion. Second is that it shows that you are a part of the church. Um, in a previous episode in KYF, we, talk, we talked about why the church lives in communion. So, in receiving the Holy Communion, literally, it means that you are a part of the church and that you live in communion together with the church. Another is that receiving communion unworthy is dangerous. So this is basically for their own good. Um, even the scripture condemns it. In 1 Corinthians 11, 
from verses 29 to 30, and it says that for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment upon himself. And lastly, we have certain exceptional circumstances uh, for maybe non-Catholics, but who have been baptized, there are certain critical conditions where they can be offered the Holy Communion. An example would be on their dying bed. And, but like I said, you need to actually believe truly because it is a communion. The communion is a statement of the faith, like I said. So you need to actually believe that Christ is present, body, soul, and divinity before you can receive the Holy Communion. So that's it, guys. Those are the reasons why. For a recap, first, the communion is a statement of the faith, meaning that you need to believe. Secondly, it shows that you're a part of the church. That means you live in communion with the church. Thirdly, it shows that receiving communion unworthily is dangerous. And like I said, you can check uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 29 to 30. And lastly, I stated that there are exceptional circumstances where people can actually receive communion. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Feel free to like, subscribe. Yes, subscribe so that you can get more content. All right. So I'll see you in the next video. Until we meet again, be bold and be Catholic. Welcome back. That was today's episode of Know Your Faith series. Hope you enjoyed it. So, no, so, and blessing, any last words? Wait, I, I, there's this question I just wanted to throw in there. Do you think women are helping, uh, we're helping ourselves generally? Because, like, on social media, I see some things that women do, and I don't know if this is supposed to put women up or push women down. No, I think that um, women, a lot, some women are not helping some women. I, I would say, like, we are, should I say, our biggest problem? I, 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 I have to agree. Because um, there are a lot of things, just to wrap it up, like, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that you, you, you feel that women should support themselves, but it's more like there's a competition. Exactly. Yeah. What's the competition about? We are helping ourselves. We're supposed to, to help better. ourselves. And it's not even, comp for me, it's not even about competition most times. I just feel like you want women to be seen as um, precious beings, but then you are putting them out at things that are just... As objects. Yeah. yeah. As just, like, that yeah. just come on. Yeah. You see a lady, she's writing a motivational speech on her page, and then... She's nude. I'm like, yeah, what I are you motivating? I'm not even looking. I'm not longer you motivating. Is that <laughs> someone like me, I'm not even. I'm no longer reading what you write. But, but I'm just uh, looking, looking at like. Well, yeah. no, I say, what are you motivating? No I think. I think to wrap. I think this. The best is just be beyond. Be the image of whatever you say. So or whatever you write. So yeah. beyond saying it, let people you know, as young people, mm -hmm. people young people look up to other young people. Mm -hmm. You are the picture they see, yeah. or you are the future they wish to have. So. The, the picture you show them is what they actually take, take. and, you know, they run with it. So mm -hmm. we should be an image of whatever we want people to see. We should be the picture we want them to see. And the other day, I saw a picture of a woman that she was, she was writing about body shaming. Like, oh, people mm. insult them because I'm fat. Oh, yes, we know. And then she was naked, <laughs> lying down and spreading. I'm like, what are you trying I to say? I hated that she just... Mm, it's okay. My it's okay. Scared me. Thank you. I'm trying to take the image. I'm trying to get the image out of my head now. I'm so sorry. I'm taking the image out of my head right now. Thank you so much for being with us. No, yeah. so thank you as always. You know, yeah. you always kill it. You always kill it. <laughs> Blessing, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because when I call you again, you yeah. become. Yeah, yeah, we'll bring hopefully. you back. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, so, you, as a woman, love yourself and treat yourself with respect, so that others can respect you. Please, today is day of the girl child. Please celebrate yourself. You are. You deserve it. We deserve yeah, it. Yeah, we deserve yeah, it. We yeah. do, we do. So to continue this conversation and for suggestions, questions, inquiries, hit us up on our social media platform at CFF on TV across board. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Dominican Media Presents on YouTube. And you'll see this episode and other episodes of the show and you'll definitely enjoy yourself. Till next time, keep being saints in, in jeans, jeans and, and shirts. Shirt. Join us, join us. Keep being saints in <laughs> jeans and shirts. I'm not wearing jeans and shirts. Uh, go and wear your I'm jeans. I'm wearing a skirt. Uh, go, where are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> See ya.